Hello, welcome to the show. This is Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. I'm your host, Nikki Eisenhower, life coach and psychotherapist. And on today's episode, I'm discussing gurus, joy, and the law of attraction. When I was first taught by a yoga teacher the word guru, I was taught that guru meant the remover of goo. We spell guru G-U-R-U. Hear that in a different way. G-U-R-U. You are the biggest guru in your own life. And there are gurus everywhere. Guru is a teacher. A person can be a guru. A moment in our lives can be a guru. Anything can be our guru. Now, one of my favorite teachers, one of my favorite gurus, she is likely one of my most woo-woo teachers, is Abraham Hicks. Now, I grew up Catholic. And if you grow up in a variety of religions, not just Catholicism, very often we're taught that anything woo-woo is dangerous. I was taught to be frightened of anything that wasn't of the Catholic faith, anything that was spiritually woo-woo. I was taught that anything in that woo-woo realm meant that the devil was getting in. It frightened me to even learn about these things as a very young woman. I will make the argument that this is a false teaching. Anyone, anywhere teaching anybody that any one thing is dark or dangerous, I find that to be a false teaching. Now, the Catholic Church continues to have child sexual abuse scandals, and this proves what I'm saying. There is no healthiness in any organization, any entity, anyone, anywhere, anybody, any group of people can become dark, can have malintent. Some priests have all the integrity and good intention in the world. And others intentionally use the trust given them by the public through the backing of the church to harm and hurt. The devil, the darkness, the intention of hurt and harm, whatever name you want to give the darkness in the world, it really can be found anywhere. It can be in someone who is grounded in science or flying high with woo-woo or anywhere in between. This is part of why I teach discernment and encourage trauma survivors, survivors of chaotic childhoods, to bring lots of discernment. I talk a lot about the negatives of the critical voice. Well, there's a healthy critical voice too. There's bringing a critical eye to anything that we're told, anything that we're sold, so that we can evaluate with discernment what is healthy, what we want to move towards, and what is unhealthy, what we want to move away from. One of my promises to myself first, and then this audience, is that I will never tell you what to think or, or what is right, but I hope to expand how you think and help you have more grounded, intuitive confidence about what you're choosing, why you're choosing, when you're choosing, how you're choosing. Choice is our power. I invite you to think with a healthy, critical eye and ear, to feel intuitively, to be your own authority figure. Because in the end, you are fully responsible as an adult for everything that you do intentionally, and also accidentally or mindlessly. And you're responsible for everything that you don't do. To consider Esther and Abraham Hicks as teachers, as gurus, it really means approaching their work with wonder, open curiosity, a willingness to challenge what we think is possible. It takes a great permission to critically think, to listen with your eyes, your ears, and your heart and your gut. Now, I've been watching and listening to, reading, immersing myself 
in Abraham and Esther and Jerry Hicks for about 15 years. Jerry was married to Esther, and Abraham is the spirit that Esther channels, that speaks through Esther. Now, in all those years that I've been listening to her teachings, her talkings, her descriptions, her guidance, her wisdom, I can honestly tell you that I have never, ever heard or felt her express anything that I couldn't accept, get behind, see and feel the healthiness in. And I have brought quite a critical eye to her work coming from that cautionary Catholic background. This last year, if I'm fully transparent with you, I have had a hard time. I've had some health issues that have been very disruptive to my forward motion, disruptive to my energy, disruptive to my mood, disruptive to how I take care of myself. One of our sponsorships, actually Happy Mammoth Supplements, are helping. If you go use their supplements, please use our code. It helps them know that we're the ones that sent you there. But I don't have this problem solved yet in my life, and I don't know if it's solvable. It may just be a wave that I have to ride until this hormonal season of my life changes. Even last night, while watering my plants before I was to be working on this very episode, I became so nauseous that I had to stop and I wound up getting sick. I had to go lay down instead of working on this episode. I have felt constantly behind. Frustration has been far too easy for me to feel. Frustration at my body. Frustration at life. Frustration that... I can't seem to do what I intended to do in an hour or in a day or in a week in stopping and having to tend to my physical body. Remember that my course 30 Days to Peace begins on the first of the month. We will blink and it'll be here. We are steadily moving through this year. Don't wait. It will help you transform stress into serenity with a unique 30-day program. I offer simple daily practices for cultivating lasting inner peace in just 7 to 15 minutes a day. These are the exercises that when life gets really, really challenging, when there's something really heavy on our hearts, these are the exercises that give us the muscle memory to be able to come back to ourselves, to our grounding, and to peace more swiftly and with more ease. Visit emotionalbadass.com slash peace to register now. AA Alcoholics Anonymous has an acronym. HALT, H-A-L-T. HALT means stop. HALT, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. These are the very things that recovering alcoholics are taught to pay attention to. Because in a moment of us being hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, it is so much harder to hold on to our self-care, to hold on to our healthy thoughts, our healthy behaviors, to guide ourselves with wisdom when our pain, our struggle seems to be taking over that very wisdom that we have fought so hard to earn over the years. So if we're one of these things, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, it's going to be a little tough to take care of ourselves. If we're multiple things, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, we're likely to very much find ourselves in struggle. I have cried hot, frustrated tears. I felt my internal critical voice doing what it does best, what it was trained to do when I was a child, tear me down. The dark critical voice, such a contrast to the light of healthy critical thinking. So easy for my critical voice to look at me and say to me, You teach this stuff. You teach people self-care. And you're struggling right now? What's wrong with you? I should be able to control my mind and my body. That's the expectation that's bringing me frustration. Former Boundaries course participants, you will recognize why I teach managing our expectations. They're sneaky. They can seem very, very reasonable. And yet they can be the source of so much struggle. From a place of depletion, it's easy for anybody's critical voice 
to grab the things that are going to get us. My critical voice isn't going to say, oh, Nikki, you're not a runner. Look at you trying to run. I don't care about running. I don't care about being a runner. My critical voice is going to find something that I'm very passionate about. My critical voice is smart because I'm smart. And when it decides from a place of depletion that it wants to pick me apart, it really can't. Then it's easy to feel embarrassed. It's easy for embarrassment to build into shame. My inner perfectionist awakening when I'm the most depleted. The inner perfectionist and the inner critical voice, it's as if they high five each other and gang up when we are hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. We don't always realize the expectation in the very moment of us feeling, particularly if we're depleted, because it takes energy to figure out what's going on with ourselves, doesn't it? This is a very easy expectation for us to fall into. Hundreds, if not over a thousand highly sensitive people have said the same to me over my career, that I should be able to control this. How much therapy can one person have? I should know better by now. Why do I feel like this? Angry at themselves, frustrated from this expectation that I should be able to control mind and body, which sounds so reasonable. If I can't even control my own mind and body, what the hell am I doing? It's very easy to feel like we're failing while we're flailing. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how we as highly sensitive people so very often spiral. So I was feeling spirally and I was doing what I know to do that is right. I was listening to my gurus, connecting to my gurus in mind, trying to get my body to feel the release, the ease of their wisdom when I knew my own was slipping through my fingers. So I was listening to Abraham Hicks. I had one of her videos up on YouTube just piddling around my house listening to her. Abraham is the spirit that talks through the human being, Esther. Now, with every guru I've ever known, from teachers when I was a small child, to Lisa, who has her own show, All Things Therapy, and very much encouraged me that I could have my show before I had Emotional Badass, I have probably learned more from the moments of my teachers across all of my life when I was observing them in a moment when they weren't necessarily consciously teaching me something. This is part of why it's important to me that I show myself to you, that I show vulnerability, even when that's uncomfortable, even when that's hard, even when I'm emotional, even when the introvert in me is like, come on, can't we have some privacy? Sometimes I give to that part and sometimes I say, this could be a powerful lesson, this will help someone. And the hiding seems so much less worth it when I make that realization. But I've gained so much by watching and observing their human experience when there wasn't the wisdom of some big lesson. So I was watching Abraham through Esther while I was feeling down and depleted. And I wanted to shift into joy. It's what the law of attraction teaches, that we frankly ignore what sucks. Let it go. Stop focusing on it and turn again and again and again and again to joy. And I was using everything in my tool belt, but I couldn't feel that joy. And the more I couldn't feel that joy, the more stressed I was to try to feel that joy. This is so easy to slide into this little psychological trap. So I'm watching Abraham, I'm watching Esther, and all of a sudden while they were speaking, Abraham stops, and you can see her stopping. It's not just that she stops speaking. It's that her energy shifted, and you can see this. It was palpable. You could feel it. And my head whipped around, and I paid attention. And Abraham said, almost under her breath, hold on. She had been speaking about Jerry, and Jerry passed away a few years ago, Esther's husband. And Abraham said, hold on. Esther just got unsettled. And in one beat, one breath, I watched her energy 
go from, oh, she's off to she's back on track. And all of a sudden in my mind, I saw my closet doors. I have heavy mirrored sliding doors on my closet. Every now and then those suckers get off track. And all that needs to happen there when those doors get off of their sliding track is they have to be lifted and just put back on that track. It doesn't matter how much I stand there thinking about it. It doesn't matter if I have thoughts like, why does this keep happening? Why did this fall off the track again? No matter what thoughts I have at the end of the day, it just needs to be put back on its track. No matter what's going on around it, no matter why it fell off of its track in the first place, it just needs to be put back on its track. Right there in that moment, I saw what I needed. And that is the spirit when we seek, y'all. I put on a random video. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of clips of Abraham Hicks speaking. I have watched countless hours of this woman. And yet in this day, I saw something I had never seen before, something I very much needed to see in that moment. And all of a sudden it clicked in for me. But for all the thinking that my critical voice was kicking up inside of me, all I had to do was take a deep breath and settle. Someone in the audience said, excuse me, and slowed down because that was not just a moment for me. That was a moment for everyone watching her. And the MC guy that was leading her talk, managing the crowd, said, can, can I ask you a question about that? What unsettled Esther? And Abraham said, oh, we were talking about Jerry. And for a moment, she felt her grief about losing Jerry in his human form. It unsettled her. And I thought, that's the word. That is the word. Not I'm angry, not I'm frustrated, not I'm depressed, not I'm anxious. Unsettled. And what gets us back on track is not trying to figure out the great unsettledness. It's just saying, I give myself permission to settle right now. Abraham explained that Esther just needed a moment. Her human form felt that grief and she missed Jerry. And then she remembered that in spirit form, we don't miss out on each other. We're right there. We're eternal. And just like my sliding closet door is just clicking in on that track, you could see it. Esther got off track when she got unsettled. She got into her feelings, into her grief, into her sadness in human form. And it was as simple and as profound as just taking a breath and settling into the greater spiritual truth. And when she did, right back on track. What a joy in being able to sit in the energy of we are all connected and we don't lose out on each other. We just change form. Therefore, I don't need to feel a sense of loss. What a way to shepherd ourselves through, to keep us on track with light, with ease, and with joy. Now, that might be the hardest part for a highly sensitive person to accept the law of attraction. Because the law of attraction tells us to shift to joy, to shift to joy, to shift to joy, to shift to joy again. If you were a child that grew up in a house that was lacking in joy, that didn't teach joy, that didn't give joy permission, that seems wild. Our inner child doesn't even know if that's okay and if that's allowed. I'm all upset and I'm supposed to just shift into joy? To a hypervigilant body, that can seem crazy, dangerous. What, I'm just going to be joyful all of a sudden? Yes. That's allowed. What a permission. When we seek wisdom and we seek more expansive, more fulfilling answers that hold us better than our stress, better than our doubt, 
what would it be like to just allow that answer in, to not fight that answer? What if it's okay to shift into joy just as simply as I got to watch Esther and Abraham get right back on the track of joy? So many sensitive people will get caught in the spiral. And the hardest part about getting off of that spiral might be its simplicity. What if we could embrace the idea that we can just snap our fingers, that it's as simple as a permission, I'm allowed to feel joy despite whatever is going on around me. Like Esther, I am allowed to feel joy instead of loss. Joy and light and connection instead of pain. What if it is just as simple as having that idea and then allowing the simplicity of that idea to wash over mind, to wash over body, to wash over our days, our minutes, our hours? I could listen to Abraham and Esther Hicks I could listen to Maya Angelou, another spiritual mother of mine. I could listen to Mark Nepo, Melody Beatty. I could listen to anybody, everybody that I think is wise. And it wouldn't really matter. The egotistical part of me that's in the human condition, it's not unique to me, might love gathering information. Our egos love that. It's the moment that we give ourselves permission to feel, to do the shift, to allow it, to put our foot down and say, this is right for me to shift. Let go of the pain. Let go of the struggle. Let go of the expectation. I felt so blessed in that moment that when I asked the universe for some help, what showed up? was the exact right little clip that I needed to watch, that I needed to see to help me remember the simplicity that is available within our self-care. The connection that's available when we reach out for help, that we are all spiritually connected, that there is an energy that runs through this world, this life, in and out of each other that connects us. Nobody can just give you this information and have it work. You work this information when you give yourself permission to feel, be, breathe it in. This is expansion. I hope that listening to this helps you find an ease today with anything that you might be struggling with that you allow yourself the permission to shift into joy. And joy can be little. There can be joy in a glass of water, joy in a hot tea, joy in the way a small child or a baby smiles at us when we walk through a store, joy in the love from our pets, joy in the birds outside. If you want to come practice peace with me, where you'll feel some of this wisdom that I have soaked up from Abraham and Esther and so many other places, and you want more peace, more ease on your journey, come join Emotional Strength Training 30 Days to Peace. Know that we will be practicing peace, coming back to it, getting back on the track of it all of our lives. Not because we have to, but because we get to. You are worthy of peace. I am worthy of peace. And when peace evades us, we get to find it again. As simply as getting back on track, just like my closet doors. Come sign up. The next group goes through on the first of the month. It's the easiest, simplest way to practice the muscles of peace. 
Visit emotionalbadass.com slash peace to register now. I am an emotional badass. You are an emotional badass. And together, we are where Moxie meets mindful. Light and love. And I will see you right here next time for a brand new episode. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.